It is time to wake up, America. These ID cards are not about defeating terrorism, but they are all about controlling the American people. I arranged an interview with Catherine Albrecht, a leading authority on the RFID chip. Her book entitled Spy Chips is the definitive book on this subject. I wanted to find out just how dangerous these chips are to our liberties. RFID is a technology that uses tiny computer chips the size of a grain of sand or even smaller hooked up to miniature antennas to transmit information about items at a distance. Back in 1999, Procter & Gamble, Gillette, and MIT got together to find a way to commercialize this technology and make it small enough, make it efficient enough, and make it low cost enough to essentially their dream is to put one of these tiny uh, computer chips on every physical item manufactured on planet Earth. The latest technology for identifying people at the point of sale, for identifying people when they make purchases, is actually the implantable chip that you can actually embed directly into human flesh. Uh, it's a tiny glass capsule about the size of a grain of rice. It contains an RFID computer chip uh, with a coiled antenna and it can transmit information also at a distance. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Homeland Security folks, uh, the Department of Defense and others have uh, expressed an interest in being able to more closely monitor the U.S. populace. And one way to do that, of course, would be being able to determine who buys what and uh, where they take those things. Radio waves can travel through walls, they can travel through wood, they can travel through the things we normally rely on to protect our privacy. Uh, for example, your purse, your backpack, your pocket, anything you're wearing or carrying. Kraft Philadelphia cream cheese has been tagged with RFID and sold to consumers, as have uh, Mach 3 razor products and other Gillette razor products, without the knowledge of the consumer. One of the tiny chips could actually even be the, the, the dot on the letter I on the back of the fine print on a package that you purchased. They were talking about having reader devices in every airport, on every bus, on every train, on every port, on every dock. One of the most worrisome applications of RFID are proposals to put them into cash, meaning that you would be able to track every banknote, where it had been, who it had been issued to, and create, in essence, an audit trail. That would, that would um, essentially take away the anonymity of cash that we now enjoy today. The ATM machine itself, as the money was, came through the, the roller device, would be, would be reading each number. And they would know who you are because, of course, you identify yourself at the bank before you take money out. And down the road, when you go to pay um, at a major retailer, it would also be possible for them, as they're putting the money into the cash drawer, to simply feed it through a little reader device. It would go in, it would uh, tag that number and transfer possession from Aaron Russo, say, to Walmart. Once everything you do is tied down to a single number and there is no longer the ability to pay with cash, then all it takes to render you a non-citizen is to simply turn that chip off. You will no longer be able to really participate in any function in society, including by food. So through the implementation of the Federal Reserve System, the American citizen has gone from being a private individual who had real money, gold, in his possession that was private to a citizen who has no privacy because all money is now being digitized. They can deduct whatever amount of money they want out of your digits whenever they want. They can trace you whenever they want. You'll be at their mercy. God forbid we allow this to happen in America. This is absolutely Orwellian. I mean, it's talking about Big Brother looking over your shoulder at absolutely everything you do, every purchase you make, every place you go, um, every company you interact with, all of that would be reported back potentially to the government. Hi, uh, Mary. Yes, I'd like to order. Is this Mr. Kelly? Uh, yes. Thank you for calling again, sir. I share your national identification number as 610-204-9998-45-54610. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. I see you live at 736 Montrose Corp, but you're calling from your cell phone. Are you at home? I'm just leaving work, but I'm... Oh, we can deliver to Bob's Auto Supply. That's at 175 Lincoln Avenue, yes? No, I'm on my way home. 
How do you know all this stuff? We just got wired into the system, sir. Oh, well, I'd like to order a couple of your double meat special pizzas. Sure thing. There'll be a new $20 charge for those, sir. What do you mean? Sir, the system shows me that your medical records indicate that you have high blood pressure and extremely high cholesterol. Luckily, we have a new agreement with your national health care provider that allows us to sell you double meat pies as long as you agree to waive all future claims of liability. What? Do you agree, sir? You can sign the form when we deliver, but there is a charge for processing. The total is $67 even. $67? Well, that includes the delivery surcharge of $15 to cover the added risk to our driver of traveling through an orange zone. I live in an orange zone? Now you do. Looks like there was another robbery on Montrose yesterday. Hmm. You could save $48 if you ordered our special Sprout Submarine Combo and picked it up yourself. Comes with tofu sticks. Those are very tasty, sir. Good value, too. But I want double meat. Well, I'm sure you can afford the $67, then. You just bought those tickets to Hawaii. They weren't cheap, eh? Oh, but I see you checked out the budget beach bomb at the library last week. Hmm. Up to you, sir. All right, all right. I'll get the sprout subs. Good choice, sir. Gotta watch that waist if you're hitting the beach, eh? 42 inches. Wow. Man, I'd say tofu and sprouts is, like, required. That's how much? Just between you and me, there's a $3 off coupon in this month's Total Men's Fitness magazine. Your wife Betty subscribes to that, right? Anyhow, clip that and it's nineteen ninety nine even. Whoa, looks like you maxed out on all your credit cards. Bring cash, okay? Have we become so controlled and so ignorant about our rights that big institutions and big government can do whatever they want with us, even without our approval? I knew for certain the Founding Fathers would resist to the death what is happening in America today. And I, for one, will not accept a national ID card. And if nobody accepts a national ID card, and nobody can board a plane with that one, then let the airlines go bankrupt. And if you can't open a bank account in a big money center bank, then open an account in a small local bank. And if we can't walk into a federal building, I personally would consider that a blessing. Don't allow these institutions to dictate to us how we conduct our lives. This is America, and we have free choice. But we the people have all the power, not the government. Government gets its power from us, not the other way around. Think of all the men and women who died in all our wars, fighting for freedom, not Federal Reserve bankers. Do you think they sacrificed their lives so that Americans can be chipped like a dog? So we could all have a homing device inside us? No. This ID card is the last step before they implant us. And that's precisely the reason nobody should accept one. And do you know what they're going to do? They're going to call on the propaganda machine, the media, and try and sell this as if it were in everybody's best interest. We're working on a product that we have called internally a PLD. PLD stands for Personal Locating Device, which is an implantable GPS for which our company owns a patent. The hybrid of the two of these products, being Digital Angel and Verichip, is what we call PLD. PLD should be in prototype form by the end of this year, by December of 2002, and we are already working with the Food and Drug Administration as well as legislative agencies with these products and ultimately with the PLD. We have a Florida family who are really pioneers in a brave new world. They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their body. After 9-11, I was really concerned um, with the security of my family. I wouldn't mind having something planted permanently in my arm that would identify me.